In this video, we'll cover the process of creating a layout template. The layout document is where you organize your construction drawings, plans, elevations, CAD details from your plan document. By having your own layout template, it can be customized to your specific needs, such as a title block, company logo, text, notes, even the number of pages formatted with your text. The program includes layout templates with different paper sizes. These are generic templates that you can customize for your business or you can create a new template from a previous project by using the tool Save as Template. If you're using the traditional file mode, I will cover those differences toward the end of this video. In the project browser on the right hand side of my screen, underneath the plans and templates folder, you'll see all of the default templates that the program has and an indicator of which one is the default template that will be used when you do a new project. That is the ArchD 24x36 layout template that has the mark right here. You can also verify which template you're using underneath of your preferences. Let's take a look at the preferences. On the general panel underneath the new plans, you can see that I'm using the ArchD 24x36 layout template. Also, while I'm in here, you can see that I have the hide metric templates. That way it won't show any of the metric templates. If you're using metric units, it will switch and allow you to hide the US units depending on which unit of measure you're using. I'm going to switch this back to US units and just note we're using the ArchD 24 by 36 layout template. When I start a new project, let's come up underneath of the new project and I will give the project name, example project, and notice it says include a layout. Again, I'm using project management mode and underneath the layout option for templates, you can select from the available list of all the layout templates available in the folder. Since I'm using the default, we'll just continue to use this ArchD 24 by 36 layout. Now the default is to open up the plan over in the project browser. I'm going to double click on the layout that was created from the layout template. When the layout opens, it shows up on page one. You see the page indicator. You see the title block. You see a revision table in here. You see a title, you see some text, some date, and a sheet number. Anything that is on the subsequent pages in your layout sheets are created on a master sheet and that is on page zero. Let's move up to page zero. If you want to modify the title block in any way, anything on this page text-wise, logo-wise, will show up on all subsequent pages and that is on page zero. Now when I go back to page one, you see the sheet number down here. I want to start at the bottom. This is sheet number P1. If you want to make a change to the way this numbers, let's go back onto the master sheet, click down here, and let's double click and open up this information. And you see that it has a macro because there's a percent layout dot label percent. You can see the drop down of macros if you come underneath the dro macro drop down layout information and you see the information from the macros and you can see that it's using the layout dot label right in here. I might want to change this and make it simple. So I'm going to go ahead and select the percent page percent and then I'll simply remove the other macro and this is just going to be a clean page number. So as we page through, it will show up on all pages. Now it's showing up page zero in here. We go forward to page one, page two, page three, etc. So since I've made that change on page zero, all subsequent pages will have that information. Scale information. Sometimes I like to put scale on the individual drawings. And so in that case, I may remove the scale out of here. I'm just going to click on the box information, maybe draw a marquee around the other box and delete that. Now for the date, the date, let's take a look at this. This is using a macro for the date. And if you want to specifically date your layout and not use an automatic date, then you can remove the macro out of here. And I'm going to do that by highlighting the text and deleting it. That way it won't be automatic. I'll need to type it in specifically for the project that I'm working on. So then I'm going to draw a marquee around the date information I'm just going to pull that down. I'm not going to be too exact for the video, so I'm just going to position that down. 
and then we'll stretch the other box. We'll give ourselves a little bit more room. In the next cell, I'm going to put my company information in here. I'm going to double click on this text. I'm going to highlight the text and I'm going to type over it with my company information. So I'm just going to paste that from the clipboard that I already had in here and I'm going to change the size of this font. I might highlight this a little bit and I kind of know the scale of font I want to use. So I'm going to just set that in here to be 530 seconds and then click OK. Then we'll kind of zoom out. I'm going to hold my control key down so it gives me a little bit more freedom in moving it. Overrides bumping and snapping. So here's my information on the title block. I'm going to take and bring my logo in and put this up above in here. And you can find your logo. You can use this as an image and then import it in and drag it over. So let me just show you the process that I would typically do for that. So I've opened up my folder with logos in it and I'm going to grab my logo and I'm just going to click and drag that right into the layout and release my mouse. Now my logo comes in, notice below it, it gives the name of it. I'm going to click on this. Let's open up the active layer display options and I'm going to turn off the labels because I don't want to see the label for that. Now I'll rotate it and then I'm going to resize it. So I'll zoom out just a little bit and I'm going to resize my logo. Make sure that it fits in this category or in this title block area and now I have my logo in there. Now one thing I like to do, let's go back in and take a look at the logo. I like to click the option to save in plan and since it was a JPEG, I'll mark that I want it to be at 100% quality. By saving it in the plan, I don't ever have to worry about it being deleted. So I like to use this save in plan when I put an image in here. Now you can resize it in here without the click and drag that I did when I resized the logo. So if you want to be very specific with your sizing information, you have access to it right in here. All right, so I have my company information and my logo in here, the template. This is going to be the page information. Let's take a look at it. This is the title. This is from the macro. When we look at the layout macro information, it's the title. So we'll explore that when we go back to page one. Let me cancel that. And then for the other title box information, I'm going to just leave those as is. Obviously, you can customize that however you want for your drawings. So now when I go to page one, let me fill my screen. Let's go to page one. You see that my company information's here. The page changes as we move pages. And then the title information for this sheet is showing up as project overview. On page zero, that shows up as page template. So the question is, well, where is this information coming from for the project overview? Let's go into the project browser and let's expand the layout and look at the pages. So on page one, let's right click on this and edit the page information. That page information is pulling that from the title, which is listed right here project overview. The label, which previously was P-1, we changed that. I'm going to remove the P-. You can also drop this down for any of the pages used in your layout template and modify them directly from here. As I add new pages, I will typically change the title information. When I do my layout templates, I usually will use this to generate a table of contents on the first page. And by putting the title in here, it'll dynamically create that for you. The layout template now has a master page, page zero, and a single page that is used for the project overview. When you're ready to create multiple pages for your template, if you want to have them, they're not required, but if you want to have them, you can right click on the page that I have in here and I can use the duplicate page and duplicate it. Now when I go to the second page, let me just double click on this. That may move the page indicator to page two. Let me right click on this. I'm going to go back into the edit page information and here's where I'm going to type in the name of the page. And I may just call this floor plan and then it inherited the label which is the macro for the page number and any other information I wanted to put in here and I'll click OK. Now you can see that the title updated automatically and now I have two pages inside of the layout. Now this is a brand new example project that I started and I want to now save this as a template. 
So what I'm going to do is let me fill my screen. F6 on the keyboard. I'm going to go to page one. I want to save this as a template so when I start a new project this will be used as the basis for my new project. Underneath of the file menu I'm going to come down and I'm going to choose the option to save as template. So I'll just kind of pause here for a second. Save as template and this brings up the save as template dialog. And as we kind of walk through this you typically will want to remove all client information. So you can see that that is checked to have that removed. If you put any CAD details in your layout, I typically don't do that. However, if you did it and you wanted to preserve those in the future, you could uncheck this. So unchecking any of these items will preserve it. Delete unused CAD blocks, layers, line styles. Again, this is your choice if you wanted to reserve those. Unlink the externally referenced files, probably a good idea. And then as we kind of come down to the bottom, delete non-template information, CAD, pictures, layout boxes, typically any layout box, which would be a floor plan or an elevation, you want to delete those. And then for the layout page tables, I will typically uncheck that because I create a table on page one for my table of contents. And then down underneath the options category, I'll mark set template as the default for all new layouts. Go ahead and click the OK button and then I'll give it a name. So we'll call it my layout. I typically like to put the size of the sheet paper in here so it's obvious when I have multiple layouts and then click OK. And then as I scroll up, you can see the new My Layout Template 24 by 36 and in the Preferences, if you wanted to verify this, underneath of the Layout Template, you can see which one is going to be used as the default and now it's available to use as your Layout Template. When you start a new project, you can leverage that information that you've customized for your new projects. Now the process I like to use in creating layouts and layout templates is to go through a project, change my layout, and then save as when I'm finished as a layout template, and then I can leverage the work that I've made any changes into the layout on the very next project. Let's take the existing layout that we have open, and I'm gonna add a table of contents in here and one more page, and then we'll do a save as just to kind of reinforce the process. Underneath the tools menu, I'm gonna come down to layout, and then I'm gonna use the layout page table. We'll Put this in the lower right hand section on page one and the first thing you're going to notice is well there's no page two. This will only list pages with content on them. Page two has nothing on that. If I go over to page two and I put in some text and I'm just going to type in the word plan so that there's text on there and when we go back to page one you now see that information that page is listed in the table so that it's dynamic and again it will only include those pages that have information on it. Now when I want to add a third page and typically I'll have a page for every sheet in my layout so that it's kind of formatted and looks the way I want. I'm going to come over into the project browser on page two and I'm going to duplicate this page. You see the floor plan information show up because there's text on it and then I'm going to Right click, edit the page information, and I might use this page for my elevation. Elevation, you see the page table update with that, and that way if I'm using my full set of layout pages, and I'll just kind of scroll through and show you my set of layout pages here. I typically will have a page for every drawing sheet that I have in my plan set. If I don't use a page, I'll delete it and the table of contents will update because it's dynamic. Now, as I switch back here and I want to now save this as my layout template, let me fill the screen here. I like to do that on page one since it will save it typically on that page. I'm going to come over into the file menu and do save as template. Repeat the same process. I'll set this as my default template and then go ahead and click OK. I'm going to give it the exact same name and I may put a word two on that so that I can update it. And then again, page number, page size, 24 by 36 and now I have that access into my layout template. I might take the first one, I'll just right click on it and hit the delete option and remove that out of my project folder. 
For those of you that are not using the latest project mode and you're using traditional file mode, let me switch over and I'm just going to show you a couple of nuances that are different about how the traditional file mode works. Now I've switched my system over. I'm using traditional file mode. It works a little bit differently for your layout templates, mainly in the way the preferences are displayed and also you see in my project browser I don't have a listing of all of the templates in the plans and templates folder so that display is not showing in the project browser underneath of your preferences you'll see the layout template if you want to change the default you would use the browse button you can browse out there is the same arc D 24 by 36 layout template you can also open up the layout borders folder and then choose which area you want to select from Imperial Layout and you'll see the same types of available ones that you saw in the project mode at the beginning of the session. And then as far as save as template it works the same type of way. You would come in, I've got a template open, let's say I've modified it, you see all of the typical pages that I might have in the layout. Again I like to do this from page one. Underneath file, template, save as template, choose the options to include and exclude, and then I would select set as my default, click OK, and then I would give it a name. Let me just type in a name here and I'm going to put in layout 2, click save, and then we'll just verify underneath the preferences. You can see my layout template is layout 2, and then in this mode when I do a file new layout, it will use that default layout template that was selected and saved. That wraps up this video on layout template. For more information, please see our other videos and you can also refer to the built-in help file. Thanks for watching.